Hey everybody, nice to see you, welcome back. Today we're talking a little bit about filtration and this tank, which is the pea puffer tank. So this is my pea puffer tank. We got this about mm, three months ago, something like that. And we've got three pea puffers and a whole shed load of cherry shrimp. And the cherry shrimp are there as a potential food source. So they, they leave the adults alone, they only ever eat the, the babies. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little ecosystem going on there at the moment. They're doing really well, and um, they're putting on quite a bit of size, even though they are pea puffers, or dwarf puffers, or Indian dwarf puffers, or whatever you want to call them. But the tank has been suffering, and it's been suffering because of the bloody filter. So the nail in the coffin for this filter is two things. It's the noise, and it's the flow rate, which has dropped massively. So the filter, which is down there, which I've already taken apart because I've already recorded this once without switching on the microphone, so that was clever. Um, yeah, it's an all-pond solution EF1000, um, which I think is the same as the Sun Sun brand that you see all over the place. I used to think it was great, but it's a bit like Trigger's Broom, this filter, <laughs> which you'll probably only get if you're in the UK, but it's had everything replaced. It's had new pipes, it's had new... Um, the, the pump filter head is the pump, it's had a new one of those, it's had new catches, it's had new baskets, it's had new hose connections, it's had new filter baskets, the handles have broken off several times, it's yeah, it's just a complete nightmare. It's also really high power usage, so it's not very efficient uh, energy wise. So it's time for it to go off to the little um, aquarium in the sky, I'm afraid, and I've replaced it with this. So you'll have seen me talking about these. These are the also all pond solution, um, the 600 HO I think. Hang on back filter. Um, so what I've done is I've just basically tried to get as much of the media that I could get out of there into that, and it's essentially one basket's worth. So I've got a basket's worth of bio home in there at the moment, and whatever you think of bio home, um, even if you don't buy into the whole nitrate reduction thing, it is a very efficient media. So the fact that I've only got one tray's worth of media in there will be more than enough to filter this tank given it's fairly low stocking levels. So that's the plan for today, get this tank cleaned up a little bit, get this filter up and running. So I'll cut back to me sticking this on there and then we'll take it from there. So that's it installed there, it just simply sits on the side. It's got some little feet under here that you can adjust to make sure it sits firmly and it's not wobbling around. So all I need to do now is put on the intake strainer. So it comes with a little strainer like this, where it's basically just a bit of plastic. We've cut out the holes for the water to get in. And the sponges themselves are meant to sit in here so you get your slots for your filter pads and then you put the sponge in. But obviously I've taken all that out. And what I like to do to pimp it a little bit is make a little hole in the sponge jam the strainer through there and essentially you increase the filtration power and make an intake sponge which just pops on the end and then every time you do a water change just take this out and give it a quick squeeze and you're good to go and um, it also comes with a little lid but I really like this filter it's really quiet you do get a nice it's not like bubbles popping, it's a nice rippling effect when it starts to turn on, but the lid goes on and you have a little knob here which controls the power of the pump. So, it's just a case of turning that on, uh, we'll do a bit of a water change to clean this up because it is quite manky, uh, and we'll have a look. The one downside there is though, the light sits on top of the, to the tank like this. So, until I come up with a solution to raise this up a little bit, it's going to be a bit wonky. But yeah, I'll find something to prop that up, or find other, some other solution for it. But for now, it's going to be a bit wonky. If you've got OCD, I apologise. So both the new and the old filter are from All Pond Solutions. So we've got the the worst filter in the world and the best. Not that, not that this is the best, but the main selling point for this thing is it's 12 quid. So it's super cheap. Um, it comes with just sponge um, and some carbon filter pads. 
but as you can see I filled it with Biohome you can fill it with whatever media of your choice you want or just leave the sponges in that will work just as well or it'll work um, but yeah there we go that's it it's all done I'm fairly happy with that needs a bit more cleaning and clearing to do but yeah I think that looks pretty good you can probably just about pick up the trickle um, so if anything it makes you want to go to the loo but it's not noisy by any stretch still got a little bit of algae issue on some of these plants which I need to take out and possibly give them a hydrogen peroxide treatment or something along those lines um, you'll also notice there's some algae on the glass I'm fine with that, that's kind of with kind of by design um, I really don't care about algae on the sides or the back of a tank it's just the front so as I can see in um, but obviously if it gets out of control and starts to affect everything else in the tank then that's a problem but no, that's fine for me puffers themselves um, yeah they're great they're inquisitive little fellows you can quite often see them hunting um, I'm not sure if they're males or females or anything like that yet but they've grown a little bit they're never going to be big fish but they're always always out and about scouting around um, like I say they live in here with some cherry shrimp so they'll often hunt the shrimplets I give them snails, I give them bloodworms, and they will kill snails that are probably about the same size as them. Whether or not they don't seem to be eating all of the snails when it's big ones, but the little ones they certainly have them. Uh, bloodworms are, are good with them. Hakari vibrabites I've used before. They, they often don't take them, but I have seen them eating them. But they're such fun little um, critters to keep. Like I say, you always see them out and about, scooting around, checking out what's available to eat or kill. <laughs> well, that's it for me today. Thank you again for watching. If you haven't already, remember to click that subscribe button. It really helps me out if you do. And we'll see you next time. I hope you've enjoyed or found this a little bit useful. But give me a like if you have. Dislike if you haven't. And let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you later. Bye.